Post Duelist Nexus, there are so many options for players to choose from. Prior to release, Pearly had already proven itself to be one of the top contending decks of the format, but the fact that Pearly got support in the form of E Pearly Noir really sets this deck up to be one of the best decks of this format. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Cards and Coffee. Today, we're going to be digging into my current Pearly list, Post Duelist Nexus. This format really has so many decks with non engine, and while you could play something like Cross Out to help with that, we've actually decided to play something a little bit different. But first, as always, if you haven't already, please go grab yourself a cup of coffee or something. That way you guys can sit down and tune in. Let's do this. Alright, so as mentioned, we're going to go through this pearly deck list and show you all the tech cards that I'm playing. As mentioned, Crossout Designator has been gaining a lot of popularity, not only in the pearly deck, but in other decks as well. This card obviously helps with all the hand traps running around this format, but it also deals with Book of Moon, which can be a problem when trying to set up Noir. But for me, the only problem I have with this card is now you have to play a bunch of one-ofs in your deck. And while it's not the biggest deal, it does hog up a lot of space. So for me, I've opted to go a different route. But again, we'll talk about that in a sec but hopping into our pearly engine of course we're playing three copies of pearly alongside three copies of our pearly lily for the most part i think my pearly engine is fairly standard i guess one of the nice things about this deck is it builds half of itself so really what it comes down to is all the tech options you decide to play but then after that i'm also playing three copies of my friend pearly fairly standard even though it does play into droll and lockbird you just need the consistency but then one thing that i'm doing that hasn't been the most popular option is i'm actually running three copies of the field spell stray pearly street to me this is one of the most important important cards in this deck, secondary to engine of course. Being able to protect yourself from all these targeting effects is very important, plus getting that extra material under your exceeds also comes up very frequently. Now obviously you can search this off Pearly Lily and get lucky and hit it off of Pearly, but the main reason I'm playing three of this card is the fact that by playing three, then obviously you can just hit it off of my friend at any time. But then after that, of course, for our quick play spells, three Sleepy Memory, the best starter in this deck now. Then of course, three Pearly Pretty Memory. This is one of my favorite ones. Then we have three happy memories setting up so many OTKs. The one delicious memory because, well, it's at one. And then I'm only opting to run one pearly yeep. You could run multiples, but at the end of the day, this card is so accessible, especially because, well, we have some other tech cards to help us get into it as well. So that's it for the pearly engine. Again, nothing too fancy. Maybe you want to cut some field spells to make some space, but I personally have been enjoying these ratios. But then moving on to some of the non-engine, of course, we're going to be playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous spring followed by three copies of droll and lock bird these by far are the highest impact hand traps in the format right now and while ash can have some matchups that it's not that great up against this card stops the labyrinth traps it stops branded fusion it stops illusion knight in the chimera matchup as well there's so many different things that this card applies to and for that reason you have to play it but then for me one of my favorite tech cards that i've been playing over cross out designator is three sarvis the ancient ascended in case you don't know what this does essentially if ever your opponent activates a card effect that would target one of your monsters, you can discard this card from your hand and negate the activation of that effect. This effect does not destroy the card, so if they use a monster, then it gets to stick around on the field. But this card happens to play around so many cards that people are playing to help counter your deck. Book of Moon has really been gaining in popularity, not only as a versatile interruption and defensive card, but in the pearly matchup, being able to chain it to the activation of pearly yeep, setting something like E pearly noir, is really a powerful play that that card offers because it prevents X Pearly Noir from hitting the field. Obviously, Sarvis helps us solve that problem because again, Book of Moon targets. And you might be asking yourself, well, Cross Out Designator can do the same thing if you're also main decking Book of Moon. But one of the perks this card has over Cross Out Designator is the fact that if your opponent has Book of Moon, they'll let you draw one or two cards in the standby phase. And then when you flip the Yeep, that's when they'll chain that Book of Moon. So essentially, if you don't already have Sarvis in your opening hand, then you have potential to draw into 
it when you start drawing off of your sleepy memories. You really do deck thin so much, so the odds of this happening is actually a lot higher than you would think. But of course, this card offers so much more protection outside of Book of Moon. Obviously, there's impermanence running around and stuff like Effect Veiler. So not only does this card help protect against those, but it also happens to be one of the best cards going up against the Cash Tira matchup. This card does not have to get discarded to Grave, so even with Shifter activated or a Rise Heart on the field, you can still use this effect. So many times you'll have a Pearly on the field, you'll use it to rank up, trying to go to battle to set up a Zeus play, and your opponent just activates a Rise Heart and banishes it face down. But there's also a lot of times where you'll have two level ones on the field, and your opponent is forced to use a Rise Heart at that moment because, well, if they go into Slacker Magician, then, well, that's just Sarvis on legs, so they can't let that happen. This card offers so much for this deck, and while it can't cover every card in the game, like Crossout Designator, I don't have to play a bunch of one ups just to make that card live. But again, there are so many applications for Sarvis, but moving on to the other supporting tech cards in the main deck, as mentioned early, Book of Moon is one of the best cards in this format, so that's why I'm opting to play it. But not only that, this is additional Arise Heart out, so that's really important for this deck as well. But then after the books, one of my favorite packages to play in this deck is actually a small triple tactics thrust lineup. One of the benefits to this deck is you have a trap card going first that you actually want to set if you do get hit with hand traps. But of course, this is one of the best going second cards in the game. So the fact that you have access to all these power cards while also having synergy with engine really puts it in my eyes as one of the best secondary engines you can put in this deck. So outside of the pearly yeep for our other targets for thrust, of course, we're going to be playing one triple tactics talents. Again, this is another arise heart out while also being one of the most powerful cards in this current meta. The fact that thrust essentially makes it to where we're playing three of this card is really amazing. And in addition, we're also playing one harpy's feather duster for all those back row decks. Obviously, Labyrinth is running around wild right now, so having this in the main deck really solves a lot of problems with that deck. I could ramble about this card forever, but really, the more I've played this card, the more application I've found in so many different matchups. But then for the last tech in the deck, it's not Dark Ruler no more, but it's actually an old tech favorite, Herald of the Abyss. A couple formats ago, this card had a lot of popularity being able to be pulled out with Thrust as well, and it was popular in the OCG to help combat Noir. But not only that, that technically gives you seven main deck outs to a Rise Heart, which which makes it so consistent to get over that card. So having all these tech cards to deal with the current format while also having powerhouses against the Cash Tira matchup really puts this deck over the top in my eyes. And while you could be playing something like Crossout Designator, I personally would just much rather have the most powerful cards in this game. So that's it for the main deck, a solid 40 cards. A lot of decks you could get away with running 41 or 42, but this deck in particularly, I think you just have to run 40 because of the fact that Pearly is always trying to hit a Pearly Speller Trap. But before we move on to the extra deck, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like the video, and comment down below. Plus, if you haven't already, make sure you're following me on Twitter. That way you're updated when new videos are coming out. Plus, I'm going to be doing a big giveaway here in the future. I have so many products from all of my sponsors. I'm just waiting to give to you. But of course, if you're looking to help this channel out more, go check out my sponsors down below. Make sure to use the affiliate link with Dragon Shield and, of course, at Next Level Anime and Smart TCG. Use code Cards and Coffee 10 to save yourself 10% at checkout. But now, moving on to the extra deck. For the pearly stuff, of course, we're playing two Pearly Noir, the best card in this extra deck. There really is no need to explain why this towers is so crazy, but after that, we're also playing two copies of Happiness, the OTK Enabler, and the Super Zeus Maker. In my opinion, Happiness is personally one of my favorite exceeds in this extra deck. It's so versatile with what you can do, but then after that, we also play two Beauty. You could get away with running one, but I like it as a good generic interruption, but then after that, of course, we have the one Plump. I think you only really need one of this because, well, Delicious is at one, so it doesn't come up as often, and then, of course, Post, Duelist Nexus, the E Pearly Noir, the Trap searcher for the deck. This card is so amazing and really makes this deck so consistent. Hands down, the extra deck is my favorite part of this deck because of how versatile these cards are. Obviously, these cards all have amazing primary effects, but their secondary effects come up all the time and catch a lot of people off guard. Happiness can bounce back row to hand. Beauty can change battle positions. Plump is essentially a farfa. And then, of course, the new noir can bounce cards your opponent controls as well. But then after that, as I mentioned earlier, we're playing the one slacker magician. You could play the nightingale, but Personally, I just think this is the best option when playing into an Arise Heart format. After that, we're also playing the Downer Magician just as an extra material. You could put it on Slacker, but usually you won't because you like the protection to go into Zeus. And then, of course, I've mentioned it a couple times. We're playing Zeus. We're playing two because this deck spits them out like nothing. And like I said, this deck really needs all the power bombs that it can. And for that reason, Zeus, in my eyes, is an auto-include at two. And that's it for the Exceeds. But moving on to the links, I'm still opting to run the one Anima, not everybody plays around this card, and that's why you can catch a lot of people off guard. And then, of course, a card everybody's playing, the one Azalea, 
Lydia. Very easy to make in this deck, and it's just good generic removal. And then for the last card in the extra deck, I've seen a lot of players pivot to a lot of different options, but for me, I've personally been enjoying IP Mascarena. It's essentially a generic link too, so if you happen to run into something like Contact C, it helps out that card. But also, you can use it to tag into your Sky Striker on your opponent's turn and offer an interruption that way, so that's pretty neat. But test it out yourself. I personally have felt like this extra deck has been perfect, and I really haven't found the need for the Lyralisk or, of course, the Sylvan Rank 1 either. So that's going to wrap things up for today's video. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. Crossout Designator is an amazing card this format. So if that's something you love and it fits your playstyle, make sure you include it. But once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And here's hoping to see you on the next one. Peace.